Hello, everyone. Good to see you all back once again. And uh, uh, I'm happy we already have 150 uh, participants who have joined us. And I, I am sure this number will uh, go above 250. Uh, this is the 15th lecture. And today we have uh, Dr. Sutanuka Banerjee. She is presently uh, serving as an uh, assistant professor in NIT Dogapur. And uh, uh, she, has, uh, she has been an alumni of uh, BHU and as well as she has pursued her PhD from Alberg University, uh, Denmark. Her area of specialization includes the area on which she will be talking today. And as I have shared with you all her uh, abstract, uh, I think three, day, uh, three, four days ago, I think you might have got an opportunity to read, the, uh, read uh, Dr. Sutanuka's uh, abstract. And uh, Dr. Sutanuka has already joined us. Thank you, Dr. Sutanuka, for joining us and uh, sparing your time for this uh, NOSIS lecture series. Just to give you an idea, this is the 15th lecture of our lecture series. We have started this lecture series from May 17th. And we plan to uh, conclude the lecture on 10th of June. So uh, there'll be around uh, 24, 25 lectures, uh, uh, speakers from all around the world and very erudite academicians from India as well. And we have been uh, fortunate that we are receiving very good response from the uh, world of academia regarding our NOSIS lecture series 2020. So the credit goes to the entire NOSIS team and the speakers who are very kind enough to spare their time, prepare so well and give such uh, very good, well-researched and authentic, uh, uh, what do you call, presentations. So thank you, Dr. Sutanuka from the entire team NOSIS for sparing your valuable time and, uh, uh, you know, agreeing to speak today. And uh, uh, yes, the, the, the platform is all yours. Over to you. Okay, I am actually really glad to have the opportunity to be a part of the NOSIS lecture series. And um, today I'll be uh, speaking on a topic which is also part of my PhD thesis. Uh, should I share? Yes, this please. Thing? Yes. Is it visible? Uh, I think it will be. Yes. Uh, please make it full screen if possible. Okay. Yes. Good to go. So uh, it is basically um, about cultural studies that I will be focusing on gender and cultural studies and the issues. Like you can see the topic of my uh, presentation, the title that I have chosen is Gender, Modernity, Morality and Transnationalism in a Bengali magazine, Noronari. In English, it is Man, Woman in the late colonial period. So actually the magazine started its publication from 1939. And uh, this is, as you know, in 1939, World War II also started. So this is a very, uh, there is a very uh, volatile situation, uh, politically and socially, culturally. So uh, basically I'll be focusing on the gender issues and uh, as uh, presently, the increasing strength of transnational connections uh, has been recognized. So I will also be focusing on how transnationalism is actually not a very recent concept. It existed from long before. Okay, and um, uh, this significance of global interconnectedness will be explored in the context of analyzing Noronari, the magazine, uh, and it will, I will also focus on actually the emergence of two prominent figures, the modern girl and the new woman, um, and their global interconnectedness and the overlapping features. 
this global interconnectedness of the emergence of the model girl and the new woman were explored in different other contexts, uh, uh, but uh, specifically in Bengal, it has not been studied. So um, this is uh, my um, area, actually. And um, I will also try to focus and examine the problematic ideas about women's sexual and social emancipation and autonomy and how it generated a kind of cultural tensions, as these issues were very controversial at that time. Um, and till today, it is a very controversial topic. So I'll be focusing on these issues and the complexities of transnational connections. So uh, an ordinary uh, actually is important because it locates the rise of global, global modernity and the overlapping of global and local discourses. Okay, so uh, and, and uh, how the Ghor and Bahi, public and private, how they are connected through the scientific discourses on sexuality, scientific. Okay, so biopolitics is also involved and at the same time nation building, gender and everything are in, everything is actually interlaced. These issues are interrelated. Okay, so um, the general aim of this talk is to highlight the problematics of the construction of the new Bengali womanhood and the impact of national connections and uh, how these transnational connections on social and sexual reform because uh, I think uh, in other some other lecture uh, the psychoanalytic society and others that were present at that time was highlighted. Okay, so um, I think you have got a bit of introduction regarding that, but uh, uh, in Shoham Pine's lecture, most probably. So uh, here I will be talking about the sexual reform, reform uh, which is generally not highlighted. Okay, and I will trace the global interconnections of this social and sexual reform to focus on the changing gender norms. How? the emergence of the modern girl and the new woman registered cultural tensions that I have highlighted. Because uh, there are dif different views regarding the attitudes, uh, the, uh, the acceptability of their social and sexual behavior and uh, acceptance. Okay, what should be the proper behavior, proper uh, sexual behavior or social behavior of a woman. So it was contested and debated. Uh, and so uh, to analyze this, I will actually focus on um, Mary Pratt's contact zone. Contact zone, um, as we understand, Contact zone is, as she has written, these are some of the social spaces. These offer social spaces where cultures meet, class, and grapple with each other, often in context of highly asymmetrical relations of power, such as colonialism, slavery, or their aftermaths as they leave doubt in many parts of the world today. Actually, she referred to the term contact zone in her 1991's essay, Arts of the Contact Zone. And in Imperial Eyes, Travel Writing and Transculturalism that was published in 1992. So how these contact zones actually provide a space and how cultures meet and how they come to terms with each other. These are significant theoretical and um, uh, practical implications of these uh, issues. We can have uh, a look at it. And these also uh, refer to the transnationalism, early transnationalism that I was talking about. And, and uh, as I have highlighted here, the key question of transnationalism is also how different cultures intersect with one another in complex and perplexing ways. So these are, there are some problematic issues regarding that of power relations, colonizer, colonize, these 
um, uh, different kinds of dynamics were there, colonial dynamics, colonial politics. Okay, so uh, we have to consider it in a very um, advanced way of understanding the problematics of the modernity, the modern girl and the new woman that I was talking about that can be situated in this context. Okay, and transnationalism also creates, as I have uh, mentioned in the slide, a greater degree of connectivity, greater degree of connectivity between individuals, communities and societies across borders. Uh, so, um, these, uh, these issues like transnationalism and contact zone, and I'll be talking about cosmopolitanism, these are not actually very new terms uh, which have been highlighted and which is being highly debated for few decades. Uh, it has um, a significance uh, and, and uh, how the transnational exchanges and networks were formed from a long time that I wanted to show you. Okay. Uh, so when we talk about transnationalism, uh, there are a different kinds of uh, cosmopolitanisms also come into question in relation to that. Um, the the uh, term actually cosmopolitanism, cosmos and polities, uh, so citizen of the world that uh, it was highlighted. It was from long time Greek cynic philosophers and um, these uh, cosmopolitan is, uh, cosmo now it is not known as cosmopolitanism as universal acceptance of um, a cosmopolitan identity or something like that. It has also been taken into local context and it has also need to be analyzed in that context. Uh, so cosmopolitanism is actually essentially uh, identified with a moral view that individuals have allegiance to the wider world based on global openness. Okay, and in this context, name of Rabindranath Tagore uh, is relevant actually. And Martha Nussbaum actually uh, referred to um, Rabindranath Tagore's home and the world in her critique uh, and, the, and the name of the work, her essay is Patriotism and Cosmopolitanism, where uh, uh, he, she talked about uh, this universality and um, these different kinds of uh, um, uh, how patriotism or nationalism could be uh, an obstruction to this um, universal conception of cosmopolitanism. Okay, so uh, there are different views about uh, Beck. She, uh, he actually intertwined cosmopolitanism and transnationalism and suggested that these two terms are sometimes he writes structure trans or have, has referred to this and uh, and um, um, uh, when we talk about uh, the universalization would as I have shown you uh, the in this slide I hope the picture um, from the book of, uh, we also have some statements. Anthony uh, he focused on that and he talked about even though we struggle to negotiate with global village, which is again a term coined by Marshall McLuhan. Okay, so of, of the contemporary world that without a deeply felt commitment to there can be no obligation universal and vice versa. So there should be a attachment. From rootlessness, we are talking about rooted cosmopolitanism. Okay, so um, when uh, we are uh, talking about this rooted cosmopolitanism, we would like to show you how the modernities actually, I am not using the term modernity because there are different connotations of modernities 
and how they as it is of the global interconnectedness the global interconnectedness of communities um, actually uh, resulted in this is not a no waste and non waste binary as we think centric people in the non western countries they have also started their own communities. so modernity uh, can analyzed in that their modernity is uh, sometimes with modernity and tradition these two terms and um, is there any problem hello uh dr sutanu ka just a second there is some technical error okay sorry for the inconvenience just a second please yes please i think so, yes you are audible yes thank you so uh, should i should i start from this slide or uh, it was audible from the the, the, the modernity one the modernity slide oh, modernity then i have to go back again this one yes this one this one this one yes okay so as i was talking about different concepts of modernities like alternative modernities multiple modernities and how they emerged like we are now consolidating the global modernity and creating transnational modernity or our own modernity so these issues were very much interrelated with with the analysis of the magazine that i am going to do and um, and uh, and more with modernity uh, these global so uh, could you hear my point like how global interconnectedness also resulted in developing modernities means how far i was i want to this slide uh, you 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 teach this slide right from the beginning this this particular slide okay um so actually trans is a global interconnectedness in developing modernities and modernities uh, modernities as i am using the term it is not only a eurocentric notion of modernity but how non western people they created their own modernity modernities actually so uh, these uh, different terms multiple modernities alternative modernities these came into our scholarly um, parlance and uh, our um, various various in various kinds of uh, analysis now we have started using partho chatterjee's uh, view uh, or uh, dipesh chakraborty's view about uh, different kinds of modernities okay so these modernities are also interlinked with mobility because now with the interconnectedness mobility has also increased and with that came the international travel okay so why i am talking about international travel because it is relevant in the context of narnari as i will be showing that how they are crossing uh, the national boundaries and trying to force transnational links okay so uh, this slide uh, in this slide actually uh i have tried to explain the international societies like the world institute for Sex sexology which was established by magnus hirschfeld in berlin in 1919 so it started from 1919 actually and at that time it was a very heated topic of discussion and it received visitors from all over the world jawaharlal nehru rabindranath tagore margaret sanger were prominent margaret sanger was a birth control activist and 
um, also she it was it was um, a controversial her controversial view of eugenics was also criticized um, but at the same time he uh, she promoted uh, this contraceptive choice and she also tried to have the international linkages okay she visited india several times and uh, world's first congress for sexual reform it was in 1921 which was followed by another large international meeting in 1928 in copenhagen with the establishment of the world league of sexual reform dr so, sukanoka sorry to disturb you your slide is just appearing half in the screen can you just uh, make it a full one is it okay we no no we actually cannot see the slide properly it's like half of the screen the slide is uh, appearing and it's very small to okay can you just stop it and start it from the beginning like uh, this slide you like close the slide and can come back we cannot see the slide properly okay so should i stop sharing and then yeah stop i mean start again from the beginning stop sharing uh, close the slide again start the slide and come come to this slide please okay Is it okay now? Is it okay now? Yes, it's okay. Please carry on. Okay. So uh, the international societies, like the world's first institute for sexology, which I already told, that uh, they started to have this kind of international network. Okay. Uh, for sex sexual reform and um, have look Ellis Norman here Magnus Hirschfeld these are some prominent names in uh, sexual reform on sexual science they have written the, uh, various books on sexual science and uh, these international connections between individual sexologists and institutions developed into a transnational network so uh, these collaboration between individuals groups and uh, institutions created many international bodies and networks and forums as i have highlighted world league of sexual uh, world league of, of for sexual reform which was very famous at that time and at the time of nazi germany it was destroyed okay uh, but but ideas kept on traveling that is my uh, uh, actual point and uh, the international involvement in birth control movement and promotion of sexual science also came into force uh, and uh, as i have told margaret sanger there are other uh, stalwarts like mary stopes okay married love she has uh, written and this is how and rabindranath tagore jawaharlal nehru these famous personalities also visited uh these different kinds of archives okay and resources so uh um, with this i come to um women's question and how women's question was also globally interlinked okay so how glo how women's question was globally interlinked uh, there there was a, the in these times actually in interwar years 1920s and 1930s there were there was a global emergence of um, modern girl and new woman and they appeared in various countries in asia europe america okay uh like um, the in, in in this book particularly the modern girl around the world around the world they have tried to find the links between the modern girls uh, those who have uh, emerged in uh, vietnam siam uh, germany ne uh, india okay so these uh, america okay so these this book is actually uh, very significant in 
uh, 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 highlighting the issue how these transnational encounters like uh, the because the, there were many nations which were colonized at that time and they had these interactions uh, global local intersections which resulted in the cultural flows and shaped modern femininities across national and geopolitical boundaries so uh, these um, uh, like um, these as i was talking about uh, the new woman and modern girl that actually ranged from japan china india south africa germany england america and the trope of these modern girl was circulated around global print culture okay so uh, and the during the interwar period as i was talking about the mobility became interlinked with the meaning of modernity modern girls on the go this is a book by friedman in 2013 started to transgress the boundaries of what was then deemed to be appropriate female behavior so women's movement and women's sexual autonomy were also interlinked uh, as um, in uh, in women's movement uh, these uh, when we are talking about birth control and women's autonomy over their bodies they started talking about gender defined behaviors also how women Uh, uh, started to defy the norms, social norms that they have been subjected to. Okay, so um, these uh, these uh, are also related to as I was talking about rootlessness of cosmopolitanism and rooted cosmopolitanism. And uh, this rootlessness and rooted cosmopolitanism uh, can be explained further when I will come to discuss uh, and analyze the um, not the magazine normally and its issues. Okay, so um, there was a book by Angela Ulacott. Uh, the name of the book is uh, Feminisms and Internationalism, where we can trace this colonial modernity. okay and different other issues so these are actually my arguments how the ideas of sexual reform surging in the west in the 20th century were interlinked with the literature on sexual science produced in bengal and especially in norunari how these are actually interconnected this is a transnational network of reform and this global inter because there is obviously because um, the people who were talking about scientific discourses on sexuality they have upper hand they are from elite and uh, upper middle class society okay so they uh, have been uh, thought as the true who know the true uh, science science about sexuality so the scientific discourses uh, on sexuality also is linked with the emergence of bio is also linked with biopolitics and the emergence of the modern girl and new woman so um, as we can see that um, this this is actually a picture from noronari as you can see that uh, the man and the woman both are raising their hands so this is like a movement signaling a kind of movement that was happening at that time this is the magazine and um, uh, this magazine as you can see uh, they have written journal they are promoting it as a journal because there are many erudite scholars who have contributed to this journal and uh, this was edited by sunil kumar dhar and the advisory board was uh, uh, consists of dr d r dhar as you can see he is mb dtm mrcp from london deputy physician medical college hospitals associate teacher of medicine national medicine institute visiting physician chitranjan hospital so this these are his qualifications dr binoy shah mb visiting surgeon campbell medical school hospitals dr bk goshami okay assistant medical hospital so and dr sudha madhav sengupta so this is actually a network 
of these elite and upper middle people from upper middle class who have created uh, who created a space for uh, interaction on sexual issues and they have questioned different kinds of uh, sexual and social norms that have been prevailing in the society and they have tried to talk about the taboo issues those have been sidelined um, uh, if uh, as uh, I can refer to Durga Ratan Dhar, Dr. D. R. Dhar, he was a prolific writer on health, food habits, diseases, and was a member of the Royal College of Physicians in London, deputy physician of Medical College Hospitals, associate teacher of medicine at the National Medical Institute, and visiting surgeon in Chitranjan Hospital. His wife also contributed. Uh, and uh, her name is Shimoti Monika Devi and she uh, wrote extensively on the topics of child welfare, scientific mothering, mother's health, etc. Uh, so, so these are uh, some of the people who were associated. Mm, and, and some renowned Bengali writers like Manik Bondopadhyay, Abul Hasan, Abul Hasanat's um, uh, Jona Bigga, Okay, Sexual Science. This was a very famous book at that time. Devi Prashad Chattopadhyay, Girindra Sekhar Bose. Uh, he was associated with the psychoanalytic society formation of, and he also, they, these people have contributed articles and essays to the magazine. Okay, so, so um, uh, even though the writers are uh, uh, from the elite and upper middle class society, the readers came from various cross sections of society and were diverse across classes. Okay, so and male and female writers both have written uh, on different topics and um, this magazine actually also opened a window to the world and uh, Bengali male and women writers were conscious agents. They are consolidating, controlling and managing Western knowledge and modernity. The inclusion of letters, they have started to send letters also in the prescription section and other there were other sections also for sending the queries. And this seem to challenge the repressive social structure by establishing these transnational interconnections between the home and the world. Okay, so this picture, this is a picture of the statue of Oslo. It was, uh, uh, it appeared in 1949 uh, issue of Noronari. Okay, so after uh, independence, as I, I am talking about, but uh, this is important because this, uh, this, um, uh, why I am showing this, because before that, before uh, it was published, there are various issues where they have specifically mentioned their experiences during their participation in the World Congress for Physical Culture organized in Lingiaden, Stockholm, and they wrote letters from abroad and revealed their glorious achievements in foreign lands. Okay, and um, they have also, in this magazine, they have also mentioned the names of the countries like Switzerland, England, Germany, Italy, Norway, Sweden, Soviet Russia, and they have praised them for their healthy exercise, physical activity, athletics, and sports. Okay, so uh, this, is, uh, this is how this um, magazine the, fits into the cosmopolitan ways of belonging. So now, when I uh, refer to this, women and the world, this is a topic you know, which I was trying to explain from the beginning that there was a global interconnection. And as you can see in the quote, they have mentioned, uh, it, it was from Ejugi uh, Chitrangada, Chitrangada of this age. Okay, uh, so it was quoted like when there was a time when it was unthinkable for a woman to step out of the family. Those who were modern among them, they were also restricted to the drawing room or sat near the musical instrument. But the trend has changed. 
among contemporary women as we can find Amy Johnson, the first woman aviator from the West. Some of our women have also joined uh, outdoor sports, displaying equivalent zeal like men. So they have started to uh, join this global discourse, global discourse of modernity, and how uh, uh, they are talking about these um, um, coming out of home and exploring the world outside. And these, uh, as uh, in the next line, it is like European women are exploring unknown lands of Asia along with their male counterpart. What they are main concern was it has not reduced the natural sexual appeal of the female body on their return from expedition many of them have married too so their uh, concern was about marriage so they should have a, a socially sanctioned uh, family life and at the same time the sexual appeal that has to be maintained okay so these are some of the questions that they have addressed. Apart from that, uh, modern girl, home and the world, the, in this slide, there are two pictures. One is of Betty Grable. Uh, she, she was a Hollywood actress. Okay, and uh, since the tra the this magazine assumed the transnational character and cosmopolitan modernity, so they have started to talking about film stars also from different parts of the world. Okay, and um, uh, these uh, uh, film stars actually, when uh, I, I am referring to, um, they have. Uh, often printed commentaries on Bengali cinema stars also, which I will be showing you, and snippets on Hollywood, European, and other foreign stars who receive similar admiration and adoration. Okay, and this is another uh, picture. There is another picture of uh, a girl, Leela, like uh, you can see, Amar Shantar Shikha, how I learned to swim. The, and uh, this, uh, this, um, this particular article is written by Leela Chattopadhyay. And she, the, so these athletic activities, film, these are represented by this modern girl culture. Okay. So, uh, as you can see, uh, the pictures of two actresses, actress uh, Meera Sharkar and Shadona Bosch, and uh, these were published in the issues 1940 and 1949, respectively. So, uh, later, after uh, why I am uh, taking this period, I will explain. Uh, these uh, different actresses like Amita Devi, Meera Sharkar, Nilima Das, Kanun Devi, Srilekha Devi, Shadhuna Bosch, okay, these, they actually represent a kind of um, cosmopolitan and hybrid identities at that time. Uh, so they represent the um, local in the global state and at the same time, because when we look at the history of Indian cinema, we will find out different actor, actors and actresses and also the interconnection between um, different um, countries and how some directors also, they have started to make films, create their films uh, in India and uh, how these transnational links have developed. Okay. But apart from that, they have also focused on classical aesthetic modernity. Classical aesthetic modernity, they have often referred to Indian mythologies and uh, these uh, Urvashi, they have referred to. So as I have spoken about um, how to how to maintain the sexual appeal of the body. So Urbashi and different kinds of um, different kinds of uh, seductive icons, they have been mentioned. So Bengali women have to be modern as well as they have to maintain the sexual appeal. So this is also modern womenhood and management of passion. In this um, slide, I have tried to show how the 
socio cultural boundaries have been renegotiated as the bengali writers actually started to express their anxiety about the emergence of a distinctly modern culture and there were um, expressions of um, these uh, pre marital sexual relations uh, and and uh, and they have sent letters actually the women they have talked about their um, first love their sexual relations and they are opening about that and they have started to prefer love marriage over arranged marriage my first love this is the picture says uh, the, the picture talks about that they they the women started to talk about these topics and they also started to show interest about sex education contraception but at the same time birth control divorce voluntary motherhood abortion this issue of abortion was also started to come up they be, they remain highly contentious because th that will be determined by the society how a modern woman should behave which lines or which boundaries she should not cross so when i am talking about social and sexual autonomy it was uh, highly debated and contested issue and and as uh, as a result this also resulted and re resulted in different tensions and these social tensions actually talk about these changes and appropriate and they actually started to construct a new sexual morality the new sexual morality uh, in, uh, resulted in the construction of a new woman okay the modern women should be modern should there should be the new bengali we should welcome the new bengali womanhood but at the same time how the women should behave that will be decided by these erudite scholars okay and the elite and upper class society these new women actually uh, registered these tensions between modernization and westernization so the women when they are talking about divorce and birth control they should not uh, behave like the western women okay they should behave uh, like a modern indian woman so um, they they have to so this selective assimilation what we should take from uh, the west and um, how how we should uh, take um, some references so the, there are intertextual references throughout the magazine and uh, it was debated how much the progress or modernity is desirable and uh, women's bodies actually became the representations of the conflicts surrounding national subjectivities the politics of respectability was attached to the discourse of creating the new bengali woman okay so, and the new woman stands for the new nation in this context i will uh, quote uh started i noticed that not only men but our women have swarmed into troops it was a dream that the uh, that the author was uh, having and uh, she he talks about they are wearing tin hats and colorful sarees of different brands um earrings and lipstick gun in one hand and vanity bag in the other my eyes became moist with pride bengali girls have also learned to be at par with the men folk by holding rifles in their tender and artistic bangle around hands nothing to be surprised they are not fallible women to be left behind but courageous wives and mothers okay so these issues are very interesting so these as i have uh, i have um, talked about these debates about the modern girl and new woman this is what i explained also the conflicts between the home and the world how much modernity we should emulate or how wh what should be the parameters of developing our own modernity negotiation and renegotiation that continue and the debates on bengal only women socio sexual autonomy that i have been talking about that raged and uh, this resulted in the reappropriation of western modernity and 
selective assimilation by resulting in the construction of a new sexual modality. Now, I will uh, show you two uh, specific, um, uh, one, one specific question from prescription and another from um, uh, Mukho Padhai. He has written the, uh, the art name of the article is John uh, Moniontron O Adhunik Manush. Okay, birth control and modern man. Okay, so uh, he is talking about this issue like the moral panic and the moral burden. Both he explored throughout his article and, and he talked about a progressive society where the root of prejudices will be destroyed, the moral burden is declining, and the women are learning to think differently, explore new things, and live healthily and scientifically. They do not become embarrassed and reddened with shame while listening to the information regarding birth control. Okay, so he was talking about this issue and here, the, here is a question from a woman reader. Okay, she, she has raised her point like I am married like voluntary motherhood. Okay, this was being uh, debated at that time and she um, raised a question I am married for one month I would be obliged if you prescribe some medicine and elaborate their application but I would be happier if you could suggest some other methods instead of medical portions I am looking forward to your recommendation for medicine or any other natural methods in this regard so this is how uh, they have started to consolidate their modernity and Sara Hodges and Samjam Aluwalya, they have actually focused on these uh, conjugality, contraception and the problematics of choice in their articles and uh, it actually these uh, discourses surrounding domestic science focused on a forward looking and pleasure seeking middle class and modern public okay so with the adoption of new forms of technology uh, and and um, the popularity of western biomedicine and uh, women's uh, female sexuality and body this also demarcated the institution of motherhood from conscious reproductive choice so, so this is how we are talking about women's uh, autonomy, autonomy over their own body. And um, uh, the um, uh, writers, the contributors in Noronari also realized that as long as married women are subject to their husband's sexual desires, and as long as there was no way to regulate fertility, women would be subject to repeated childbirth and managing a large household. Okay, but at the same time, they became very critical of the, of the lower strata of women. And uh, they, the, the, the main objective was actually to reformulate the norms and functions of the middle class family as a site of moral and cultural restructuring of the nation and create educate compatriot wives. They were talking about companionate marriage and marital compatibility who would bring discipline, order, and hygienic practices into middle-class homes. So they are talking about these different issues. And here in this slide, I have uh, referred to the number of questions that um, they have received um, and it, were, it was in 1947 this issue was published where they have um, mentioned 7474 7, questions they have received till now and the total number of sex specific questions is 4922 food and nutrition 1102 exercise and sports 585 beauty and makeup because cosmetics was also a part of that refashioning body controlling body okay and um, these uh, techno technology technology by apply 
so uh, application of technology public health 399 various diseases their treatment 957 so they have mentioned this huge number of questions from the readers and um, after 1947, uh, after the independence, uh, when uh, India is divided uh, into uh, like India and Pakistan, a new nation was formed, uh, the Bengali readers from East Pakistan also started to send their queries. So um, they, uh, and, and uh, it uh, gradually the popularity of Naranari became such that they received uh, questions from Myanmar, Pakistan, India, and they also established an office in London. Okay, so these transnational connections were very important in analyzing the discourse of sexual science and gender, okay, and women's autonomy or modernity or whatever. And um, uh, apart from that, uh, there was, uh, I would like to mention here, I have, while I was uh, researching on this topic, I have seen that uh, there was obscenity charge against the magazine also in 1951. Uh, so um, this is all that I wanted to uh, talk about. Uh, and uh, now I would like to have some questions and also I will continue the interaction. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Banerjee. Uh, yeah, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I unfortunately today I'm having a lot of uh, computer, internet, and all kinds of issues. So sorry for these technical glitches. And uh, uh, yes, so uh, one of the sentences that I liked about Noronari that you said and concluded was uh, such was the popularity of Noronari that uh, uh, you know after the uh, partition. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, questions came from Bangladesh and then there was a time when it came from Myanmar. Yeah. It was East Pakistan at that time. Bangladesh yeah. was not formed. Yeah. So in that same way, I hope that one day uh, Gnosis will also have that kind of popularity. And uh, although although people love us a lot, mm -hmm. uh, yes, so amen to that. So thank you very much for, uh, uh, for uh, this presentation. And uh, as is evident that uh, a lot of hard work has been put into it and uh, as this is a part of your uh, research as you as you said and uh, yeah. we we consider you know uh, sometimes jokingly we say that research is more difficult even uh, you know uh, it's it's more difficult like it's it's kind of a marriage it's more difficult uh, than really getting married also so research is something which uh, i would consider as uh, a rebirth for a scholar and uh, uh, th there's a completely u turn after the masters uh, one when one uh, tries to uh, you know delve into the realm of research be it in yeah. phil or phd or or, or postdoc so yes uh, i got a um, i got a comment also that good talk but technology is not supportable madam thank you for such a beautiful <laughs> comment uh, with the limited resources that we have uh, this is what we can offer and uh, yeah uh, the mobile towers, unfortunately, are not handled by Gnosis team. So, uh, and the weather. Uh, being uh, situated in Northeast, uh, we, uh, we experience rain, I think, uh, eight to nine months per year. And now also it's heavily clouded and we, we are expecting rains today. Uh, so, those kind of technicalities, uh, please bear with us. Uh, but it has been a very thoroughly en uh, en enriching and very, very... Uh, you know, thorough research has been done and presented today. 
by you, Dr. Kutanuka. So, congratulations and thank you very much for presenting this and making this. It's my pleasure, actually. Making this uh, Gnosis lecture uh, one more add feather to the lovely lecture series that we are having. Uh, there are a plethora of questions. Uh, uh, yeah, I would just like to inform that we had 210 participants today joining us in spite okay. of these technical difficulties. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had, uh, I have a lot of questions, so I'll just ask a few of them uh, because of the time constraints and today the technology is also not supporting. I'll just see what happened. But yes, uh, mm -hmm. the first question I will take from Pakistan question. Uh, it's a uh, associate professor, um, Dr. Muhammad Akram. Uh, he first congratulates you. I quote him an interesting and informative talk. And his question is, what is your stance on the contemporary emergence of new women with regard to social and sexual emancipation? This is a very interesting topic because when I was researching on that, you know, when I started, I will just share one of my personal experiences. When I started to search for these magazines, which used to be published in uh, 1930s, 1939, this Naranari, and there were other books like I have mentioned, Abul Hassan of Sexual Science, and there were uh, Jono Bigan and others. Uh, I faced uh, really curious glances and uh, some uh, comments like, uh, okay, the, this is uh, something that is very taboo till today. Okay, that, that is why I became very convinced that this should be my research area. And about uh, the new woman and their social and sexual autonomy, which I think is a very controversial topic till now because we still struggle with uh, these issues. Like I was talking about birth control, divorce, contraception, voluntary motherhood. These are still debated largely in public. Okay, so uh, I think um, it has still, the normary has relevance in today's context and we are like feminism in India, you know there are, when we talk about feminism, there are different kinds of comments, okay, whether you are a radical feminist or whether you are a liberal kind of moderate feminist or feminists are uh, a curse to the society, okay, so these kind of issues come up. So obviously there are different kinds of um, issues, debates, contest, contestations and tensions regarding this issue. Uh, what should be, who are the new Bengali women who can have the choices, assert their choice and assert their voice as well as their social and sexual emancipation. Thank you. Dr. Ram Sevak Thakur from Nepal, his question is, Kindly explain the role of Mary Carpenter in challenging patriarchal, patri, patrilineal, and patrilocal. So, patrilineal, patrilocal, uh, obviously this is a um, huge uh, importance and um, has a very huge importance. Uh, but the thing is that uh, here I don't understand how it is related No, sometimes, sometimes uh, Dr. Ram Sevak also tries to uh, get your feedback depending on the presentation. That what is your take on it? As a researcher in this particular field, what do you feel? That might be also one of his uh, intentions of asking this question. Uh, see, there are, uh, as I have tried to highlight through my research is uh, how this local and global intersection is impacting the women's choices and their... Um, how uh, when we are talking about autonomy, what should be the, because uh, sometimes it is side I know, talk about women's agency, not autonomy. Okay, so, but this is a very important, significant point and there are many feminists, okay, like he has mentioned, there are many other feminists and other writings about these uh, issues and these translocal and these transnational connections. I think these are very important and significant and pertinent in present context because we are not when we are talking about uh, um, india like uh, again we are uh, at this present situation it, it is not way, way about when we are talking about globalization transnationalism and these issues i think these these are some of the very important points which we should consider and which we should think about Uh, 
the other question is from dr Rob, uh, robert g from philippine university now he is asking your opinion about uh, an issue which is happening in philippines okay. uh, his question is what can you say about a colonized and occupied country just like the philippines who has been defining a native woman it has been a question in the philippines the maria clara who is a spanish and mestizo concept of a filipino woman does it mean we have to decolonize maria clara and redefine our concept of womanhood in the philippines obviously because when we are talking about like colonized nations when they try to talk about their nationhood and national subjectivity the women's question is also interlinked and it has changed and uh, well, like it, it is talking about the changing uh, social and economic and political status of women um, so uh, um, these uh, colonized nation are uh, obviously under the threat of loss of their culture okay so they have this tendency to uh, renegotiate and to understand what should be uh, a new woman in that particular context but at the same time i will i will say let the woman decide the, which kind of uh, modernity or uh, modernities she want to express or she wants to establish herself as the so called modern girl or the new woman that should be her choice when we are talking about this autonomy so it is not uh, obviously theoretically we will talk about decolonization this this is a part, this is my research uh, talks about this transnational connections cosmopolitanism and this global implications of sexual reform but at the same time it can be analyzed in a different way when we will decolonize it um, uh, from uh, we, by application of the theories uh, uh, so at that time we can also say how the knowledge when we are talking about uh, knowledge uh, how the knowledge was also colonized when I mean, ideological ideological construction so because i am i am referring to the elite and the upper middle class society who were obviously in a privileged position okay so this can be also analyzed from that angle and I, as i have said from uh, philippines the context in the context of philippines so uh, the the woman let the new woman decide her own modernity i think that would be thank you i have one more question from philippines uh, it is by dr regina via garcia her question is some have given feminism a bad reputation due to wrong interpretation do you think a sexual reform should be done should there be another term for feminism that is exclusively defining feminism removing its negative stigma mm -hmm. Uh, actually the thing is that whenever you do something you will be criticized but i think as far as i understand there are different points perspectives liberal feminism marxist feminism socialist feminism radical feminism post modernist feminism post colonial so this this uh, um, uh, these continue but the thing is that we have to be open to different interpretations like whatever i am saying if you do not like it obviously you write about it you challenge it and all those things uh, in the same way i believe that everyone has their freedom of speech and expression and this uh, they they can assert their uh, own um, view and they they express their own opinion so this negativity and stigma that we are talking about obviously that like uh, presently we see something like um, in some cases we think that okay they are uh, against men or something like that but uh, it depends it varies from person to person right so uh, why should we become so much bothered about that okay let women or men have their own views regarding what they think is their own opinion but i mean express let them express their opinion and there should be there should be obviously nationalism there are criticisms of um, nationhood nationalism anti colonial nationalism say in the same way there should be criticism of um, international uh, 
network of feminism global feminism like chandra talpate mohan ki was talking about under the western eyes okay so there are different kinds of um, context that we have to understand so everyone should have the freedom of expression which i believe thank you for so distinctly uh, putting across your thoughts uh, dr banerji i have a, a up, upcoming very inquisitive scholar uh, research scholar from jadavpur university dipanita barua her question is and and most of her questions are like this only and it's very interesting uh, <laughs> she she talks that can't we take miss ifali the famous cabaret dancer of calcutta who too contributed immensely during this period Though a lot of scholarly articles are there about women who are participating in the field of performing arts, mm. but how far had they been able to subvert the traditional gender norms attached to their profession? Mm. This is uh, like again, as um, uh, I think he, she is focusing on particularly gender and performance. So, um, th- how far they have subverted? This is a tricky question because you know every like I am talking about nineteen twenties and thirties. Then in nineteen thirty nine to nineteen forty five, there were different kinds of expectations from women. Like uh, in the in the West, it was uh, World War Two. and then when world war 2 uh, was over they were told to go back to their home okay so uh, so um, uh, baby boom okay the baby boomers the generation uh, after that 1960 again feminist revolution happened so it keeps on changing subversion and uh, at that time uh, how they have subverted the gender norms maybe different from now how they are subverting the gender norms and uh, i think uh, and and in the, um, these uh, differences in historical periods also have some um, different kinds of transitional phases okay so we cannot completely say that okay this is the way that someone has subverted and this is the same thing that has been uh, uh, that is being followed till now this is not the case because there are Mm, different issues that have come up, and uh, Cabaret dancer like uh, she has asked the question. This is very interesting because when we are talking about gender and performance, so body politics. This also comes to a question. Nationhood, morality, okay, gender. These all are interlinked. So I think uh, this is a very pertinent topic for research. Also, this ex- uh, opens a new arena of research. for gender and performance studies and all so this subversion and transgression of gender boundaries they are all to they all need to be uh, studied in that particular context i think it appears that she is satisfied with your answer <laughs> uh the next question you know this research scholars i really feel they are the future of our academy so i uh, really i uh, try to deal with as much of uh, sincerity as i can with these research scholars uh, because our time it was not very congenial you know uh, that uh, decolonization is very much important in the field of research also exactly mm-hmm. uh, another research scholar uh, swetal ramachandran she is a phd scholar from the department of women studies university of madras and mm-hmm. i will quote her uh, first she congratulates you and i quote wonderful topic and presentation ma'am uh my question is that as opposed to their western intermediaries how far has negative myths of ideas of transnationalism affected the arrival of modernity for in, for women in the colonial era okay so uh, like um, when we we as you were talking about uh, negative implications of transnationalism right Dr. Shoikha Panerji, am I right? Uh, yes, uh, she is talking about the negative myths. Yes. Hmm. So, uh, so this is like uh, actually when I I am talking about uh, more, the modern girl and the new woman and the construction of new womanhood, modern Bengali womanhood. They are they have differentiated how. for a woman should be modern this selective assimilation which i was focusing on this actually 
controls con controls the ideas about modernity so this transnational the, the myths of transnationalism there are people who have talked about no okay that will lead to westernization that will lead lead to uh, moral corruption of the society okay uh, loose women so these these words these words have been uh, used and is still being used these words have been still being used actually to define different uh, so when we talk about globalization and the negative impacts of globalization because again this is the question of power okay uh, power and um, uh, how the imbalance in power equation impacts us okay so these are trans the negative myths of transnationalism uh, are al always there and still now we are facing when whether we should open our boundaries whether we should cross the boundaries or we, whether we will be very proud of the achievements of our nation only and our own indian women our new indian women they will be defined by the society's stri strictures or they will pre the prescription the, the uh, prescriptions and proscriptions both that should be taken into consideration so obviously in colonial time there are different kinds of tensions and uh, there are um, scholars and there are uh, different uh, writers who have talked about like uh, there was a book europe america jono tatto okay europe and america's sexual theories so in that they were talking about how europe and america and sexual liberalism in their countries are affecting india very negatively okay so um, this is a very interesting question and Mm, this is how tensions emerged in colonial spaces in, in in constructing colonial modernity or consolidating specifically research scholars are always interesting dr banerji <laughs> amit, amit mondol's question is is it necessary to create binary regarding the issue of gender discrimination because it is not only men who have turned women into subject of dominance but women are equally responsible for making <laughs> hierarchy among themselves mm. and it is only to take up a position over other women that is the intention so what is your take on it <laughs> so actually it is not about men against women or women against men okay so it is more about uh, patriarchal culture which we uh, generally feminism talks about it is about Uh, it is more about uh, how um, it is defined predefined social and sexual norms and gender norms that control the behavior attitude um, of women mm, so it can be women it can be men so there is no such binary actually this binary we construct this binary Uh, no feminist like uh, starting from mary wilson craft uh, to simone de beauvoir or any other feminist uh, recently they have not um, uh, set men against women or women against men or women against women okay so i think <laughs> this is important to rethink about these issues okay so this is when we are talk uh, when we are talking about equality or equity especially so we are talking about this uh, uh, equitable access to resources equal participation so it is not really about creating new binaries or uh, maintaining the previous binaries so we have to think beyond the binaries actually you are you are taking the questions very uh... aptly See, and you are answering it more sincerely uh, the testimony to the fact is the chat box swetel just now is uh, has uh, you know replied that she is more than happy with your answer swetel <laughs> ramachandran from university of madras yes uh, just before going to the next question i just like to remind uh, our participants that in, in spite of tomorrow being a saturday we have a tremendous lecture on african literature at 10 o'clock in the morning by dr nandini sen from delhi university she is an okay. assistant associate professor uh, and an alumni of jnu she'll be talking on african literature doing a lot of work on african literature so she'll be uh, talking from 10 o'clock in the morning 
the details have already been shared with you please log in that will be also a fascinating lecture and enriching lecture sorry for the interruption uh, dr banerji yeah the next question uh, one more uh, and she just writes writes prefers not to mention she just writes i am a student and her name is devulina ghosh and uh, she has a very interesting question and you uh, i think will be able to very interestingly answer it first of all i quote her she says thank you very much for an for such an enriching lecture and she gives an observation i have an observation that most bengali modern women if dressed in modern clothes are giving the remarks such as baje mein what is your take on that if they are considered modern because of their progressive thinking why cannot they dress according to their comfort <laughs> exactly again again i will be highlighting that this is a person's choice what a woman and how they will dress a woman how how they a woman will dress or how a man will they dress this is completely uh, as far their convenience actually so actually we have this habit or tendency to um, define what is moral what is immoral okay so these and and as i was talking about the social anxiety about um, the this behavior or attire this have always been prevalent so this is completely um, ridiculous actually to uh, judge someone by the by their attire okay whatever um, she or he is adorning it is his or her personal choice i think and we have to be uh, more liberal in okay okay so um so, uh, sometimes obviously we dress as per the occasion obviously so uh, i i think the society will be more uh, healthy if we think that everyone has their own choice everyone has uh, their idea of how they are going to present themselves in a particular situation so if we are more open to that we have we can generate this openness in the society that will solve many of the problems i have uh, dr debolida guha thakurta she is a, a professor in calcutta english department her her question is uh, noro nari if opened up discussions on female body and sexuality which came out in 1940 then mm-hmm. why it took so long in 1974 to come up with the report towards equality yeah actually ordinary i i told you that in 1951 i found that there is a um, case against ordinary uh, and the charges of obscenity was leveled against it okay so it was actually it was not the society has become very progressive at that time they are have started to create a space of interaction regarding these taboo issues but that doesn't mean that society has thoroughly changed after that when india became independent again nationalism and how transnationalism there is always nationalism and cosmopolitanism okay there are always uh, tensions between these how far we should allow ourselves to cross the border so um, but but uh, as i was talking about um, rooted cosmopolitanism appears um, reference and all so we have to think that uh, this um, globalization and transnationalism these are not very harmful uh, in the sense and uh, local global intersection um, this help this enrich uh, enriches actually Uh, the area and uh, the status of women as uh, i was talking about in 1940s and uh, when when abul hasanat was writing and in ordinary they have uh, many uh, references to robindranath tagore's writing as well okay so they have tried to um, open up the discussion regarding these issues but then how and um, what happened after these uh, like 1974 you were talking about 20 years or 30 years what has happened uh, we we are witnessing a kind of now we are witnessing a kind of surge of feminism again so um, so this actually uh, as the period changes the decades change i think uh, these uh, questions come up 
again and again. It is not like at that time uh, society was very progressive and uh, after 1974 when the report came out, it, it, uh, it was highlighted how repressive social structure was actually discriminating women. So it happens. It is actually opening a space of interaction, discussion rather. There are many who are saying about the wonderful conduction of this webinar and the resource persons who are coming. I would just like to inform them. I think this is not a webinar. Uh, this is more of a uh, refresher course kind of because uh, we started this on May 17th and we are finishing it on June 10th. So this is around 21, 22 days continuous mental feasting that we are having. So it's more of a refresher course. And if you see the lectures, all are different from one another. And uh, uh, we will see in the due course of time, there are very interesting lineups in, uh, uh, in week three and week four. Uh, very interesting lineup. So please bear with me. I'm not able to share so much in beforehand uh, because I'm trying to rope in as many uh, good people I can so that this becomes a platform for all of us. Uh, in this time of negativity, in this time of utter frustration, this becomes a place where every day evening you come and you have a good mental feast, an intellectual feast. That is our intention uh, on Gnosis. Uh, I will take two more questions and I have interesting two questions. One is from Dr. Ahuti Dhanduk here. She is an associate, uh, she is an assistant professor in Gujarat, Bhavnagar. Her question is, uh, did Noronari also refer the Bengali woman in particular and women in generally performing through political participation, say freedom movement? I mean, her question mm -hmm. means is only did it talk about Bengali woman or it talked about woman as a whole? And also yeah, her yeah. question is, uh, mm -hmm. did it also talk about women who were actively involved in political participation during that time, for example, the freedom movement? Mm. Um, uh, they have not referred to um, women who are politically um, active at that time uh, as such, but uh, there are references to, the, like I, I have talked about some of the references to constructing new women and their political, they have general opinions regarding this issue and uh, actually Kamala Devi Chattopadhyay was also very prominent at that time I think but mainly Narunari was talking about Bengali women, sexual norms, gender roles, how that is changing um, and how, how uh, why, why um, there is a very, um, th there is a moral panic regarding women's uh, behavior or sexual behavior or social behavior, they are talking more about that rather than their political behavior. Because they, as, they, as I have shown it, this is a mainly journal about health, hygiene and sex. So this is more about body and sexuality uh, and uh, that specifically focuses on Bengali women. Thank you. Dr. Sobhan Chakravarti asks, his question is, in our modernity, Partho Chatterjee, since he has quoted, writes that there had already been a Bengali association in Calcutta Medical College. Uh, do you find anything interesting from the perspective of a subaltern woman on the new mm -hmm. Indian woman issue, other than some imitation of the Western models, mm -hmm. in our own classical models, both elites? Uh, um, I, I, like I was talking about, they have not only, it is not only about uh, the contestation or tension between westernization and modernization. As I have talked about the alternative modernity and multiple modernities, okay, as they are developing, because in colonial, uh, colonial modernity, it itself opens a space for negotiating different kinds of and different notions and implications of modernities. So obviously there are, um, as uh, you have said um, very correctly, that Bengali Association in Calcutta in Medical College and also psychoanalytic associations were also there who were talking about this. So uh, they, they are not only um, here, uh, as uh, I have tried to show, uh, 
in northern nadi in the context of northern nadi actually this is more about global local and transnational interaction rather than the subaltern women from the subaltern women's point of view because as i have said this is uh, specifically from the elite and upper middle class background the writers are so they have they have also very critical of the women who whom they think they produce children they are the producers of um, multiple children then that is required for uh, for an appropriate so called appropriate uh, family size which goes well with the uh, um, construction of a new notion nation sorry so so um, these these voices uh, there is uh, there is a lack of different kinds of opinions and there is a um, these voices are missing actually from the point of view of the marginalized or subaltern women and how they are talking about this this also i have highlighted in my research that uh, this is more uh, from uh, the, the privileged section of the society who are talking about women's body female body sexuality masculinity also is there though even though i restricted my topic regarding this and even they have been talking about um, uh, transgender okay issues okay and uh, this is a very interesting magazine if you can get hold of it please go through it i will suggest <laughs> you if you kindly allow i can take two more questions okay dr afifa bano she is a lecturer in U university of bisha saudi arabia her question is what is your take on problems with fetishing bengali women sorry can you repeat fetishing bengali women what is my view what is your take on the problems okay. with fetishing bengali women there was actually uh, in ordinary as i have limited span of time i cannot show you all the pictures but there were um, nude pictures of women uh, which uh, became a sensation actually at that time and um, there uh, from bathing women who were taking bath uh, their pictures were also there obviously the people they are exoticizing like classic from classical myths also they are taking examples and uh, when i am referring to the modernization this whole modernization paradigm and this discourse and the paradoxes of modernity they are at the same time talking about how to retain sexual appeal so they fetishize women's body obviously bengali women's body bodies were fetishized which i think and if you go through the magazine you can find there are uh, pictures of many nude women as well now i will take one more question the last question from one of one more one more very inquisitive scholar uh she is an mphil scholar in comparative literature department jadavpur university uh, okay. ananya bhattacharya actually she has two questions the first is a very interesting question uh the names that you mentioned of the editors and all other important names associated with the magazine noro nari mm -hmm. are all male yeah a magazine that seems to have opened new arenas regarding discuss discussion on female sexuality and multiple feminities and female body it seems so weird that no woman is associated with the editorial body what is your take on it i think uh, as i as i think when i was going through uh, uh, the issues of the magazine i was also trying to find out uh, the women writers number of women writers and uh, the women readers because you know when i i am concentrating on the gender discourse i have to be aware and conscious of this uh, these issues actually so um, the editors as you know as i have mentioned they are all male but as i have mentioned uh, the there were some like the wife of some of the editors were also contributors but they were in the um, they were not in the limelight so much
charts like editors they uh, took the burden on themselves the elite and upper middle class men took the burden on themselves to liberate so called and emancipate bengali modern women but women also contributed in the magazine like i so showed you that uh, lila chattopadhyay she was writing and there were many other female writers were there but yes it is the cons it is conspicuous by its absence the names of women as female uh, as editors her second question is and i quote her i could not understand the significance of the statues that you had shown us in one of the slides with respect to the okay. uh, to the lecture hmm. i have shown it just to show you that uh, when they are talking about liberal sexual culture oslo it was um, the statue of oslo so when they are talking about liberal sexual culture they are uh, referring to kama sutra also and they were repeatedly talking about how we had uh, the, the classical indian sexuality and classical liberal culture that they have constructed but uh, to uh, uh, to them according to them it is also the same with the western liberal sexual culture they not only refer to these statues which i sh showed you the only one there are different references of these uh, architectures greco roman architectures were also there so these uh, sexologists and writers they were talking about um, different kinds of architectures and also kama sutra and um, the constant khajuraho temple and other te other other constructions and architectures in relation to uh, propagate a comparatively liberal sexual culture in in this relation i thank you dr sudanuka for so and you know there are you can see the chat box uh, people are really uh, i would rather use the word mesmerized and happy and content with the way you have answered the questions and credit goes to your uh, research your thorough investigation of the facts uh, which was very evident the way you have presented your presentation today and uh, you have uh, also added one more feather to the cap of the nosis lecture series thank you from the entire team of nosis once again and we will look forward to more associations with you in the near future as well it was an absolute <laughs> pleasure to have you today and an honor as well and uh, dear participants thank you very much don't miss tomorrow's uh, lecture from 10 o'clock in the morning dr nandini sen from bharati college new delhi she will be speaking on african literature details are already shared with you please do join us and from the whole team of nosis dr shutanuka banerji thank you so much for your unidite lecture today we are really honored and overwhelmed thank you participants this is my pleasure actually <laughs> thank you i look forward to more such collaborations as well <laughs> dr shweta banerji signing off from now thank you so much